Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Sorry about that. Go ahead, make your way around. You come on through. Come, come check it out over here. I want you to see. Mira. All right. So my Spanish is uh, not so good. All right. <laughs> so, um, a cuarto de la Biblia. Um, qué color es Jesucristo? Sí. He's perfect. He has no color. Okay, okay. So, um, who is this guy right here? Huh? That's Jesus, right? Now, if we believe that Jesus is perfect and has no color, how can we say that just this is Jesus? Because this man has a color. He's pink, right? So. We believe in the Bible, right? The Old Testament, the New Testament. Okay. Now, if I was to go into the Bible and show you what Jesus Christ looked like, would you believe it? In person? What did he look like? Because Christ was hung to the cross, right? So in order to hang somebody to the cross, they actually have to have a body. And on that body, they actually have to have flesh, right? And on that flesh, it has to have color, right? So if... if the okay, you can stay though? Okay, but watch this. I'm going to give you one scripture. Watch this. Yep, Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. This is talking about Jesus Christ, okay? Apocalypse 1 y 14. The book of Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So it says that his hair on his head was white and woolly. So this, this man doesn't have white woolly hair, right? Right? Read. Read. And his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass? It's brown, right? So it says, when you look down at Jesus Christ's feet, it was like the color of brass. Does this man represent the color of brass or brown? No, he doesn't. Read. As if they burned in a furnace. Not only was it brown, but it was so dark, it looked like his skin was burned in a furnace. Does this man look like his skin was burned in a furnace? No. Do you know why? Because Jesus Christo is moreno. Very, very dark. Negro, according to the Bible. This image right here, you can't find in the Bible. Jesus is a black man. Yeah. What tribe do you come from? What's your nationality? Which, 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 which Hispanic? Are you Ephraim? Are you, I mean, uh, Puerto Rican, Mexican? Mexican. Mexican? The Lord says that you're from the tribe of Issachar, the Aztec people, right? Jesus loves everybody they own the countries. Okay, do you understand that he's a black man now? According to the Bible, Acuerdo de la Biblia, Jesucristo es moreno. Jesucristo es no blanco. Okay? That's for you. Make sure you go to the website, all right? So we just read out of the Bible to our Spanish-speaking sisters that Jesus Cristo es no blanco. Jesus Cristo es moreno, acuerda de la Biblia. Christ is a black man, has always been a black man. So the question is, if, if, the, if Christ was black and he was born a black man, why have we always believed him to be a different color? Because the Bible 
people been here for over what? Thousands of years? Right. Why have we always thought, even though the Bible says he has woolly hair, why do we think that it's long and stringy? It's impossible. It's called brain washing. Now we got to come back to the word and get washed by another, by something else. Give me Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26. We've been brainwashed here in America to believe lies. Christianity is a lie. Mormonism is a lie. Jehovah's Witness is a lie. They teach you contrary to the commandments of God. This message is for you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You are called the Israelites according to the Bible. Read. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 26, that he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Now that we've been brainwashed here in America, the Lord says that now you have to be cleaned and washed by the word of God. Because once you go into the Bible, you see there's a big difference between what America taught us, what Catholicism taught us, and what Christ is telling us. You understand? Because what it, what what type of laws did he give us? He gave us the dietary law. Right. What should we eat if we really love God? Let's see. Get Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. What are some things we should eat if we really love God? Come on, let's read that. The book of Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. And the swine, though he divided the hoof, God says the swine. The swine is puerco. The swine is pork, bacon. God says the swine, read, and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. He is unclean to you. Pork right here. Pork right here. If you love God, come listen to the word. Listen to the gospel music. If you love God, listen to the word. This is gospel. He says that the pork is what? He is unclean to you. God says that puerco es no bueno. It's muy malo. Acuerdo de la Biblia. God said that pork is bad. That's right. Something that you should not put into your body if you really love God. That's in the Bible, people. This isn't my words. I'm just here reading what God says. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's what he said. Read. Of that flesh shall you not eat. It says, even of the flesh. What's the flesh? When you put pepperonis on a pizza, when you got carnitas, when you put all of that stuff on the on the on the tacos and all of that. God says, if you love him, you you blacks, Hispanics, then you would not do what? Of that flesh shall you not eat. You wouldn't even eat of the flesh of pork, of pigs. How you doing, my brother? How you doing, man? Hey, I got a question for you. You believe in the Bible? You believe in God? Okay. Hey, I got a question. I've got a question. Oh, he believes in God. You can't hear God's words? You do. Okay. Read it again. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. So God says in his word that those who believe in God would not eat pork. Puerco es muy malo, acuerdo de la Biblia. Okay. Read. And their carcasses shall you not touch. Even their dead bodies, once you kill them. God said you shouldn't even touch it to put it into your mouth, to cut it up, to put it into the, to the chopping house. Pork chops. God says no. Read. They are unclean to you. They are unclean to you. It's not good. It's an unclean thing that we put into our body. We put it on our tacos. We put it into our burritos. We eat pork chops. We eat all of these things. God says it is what? The, the, they are unclean to you. It is unclean to you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's your dietary law. That's why we keep getting sick. We got high blood blood pressure, we got gout, we got diabetes, we got high cholesterol, all of these things are called preventable diseases because we keep putting what God told us not to put into our bodies. Read. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Now we going into what God says we should put into our bodies from the waters. What's another word for that? Seafood. This 
message is for the Israelites, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read. Whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall you eat. So we go fishing a lot. We like to get seafood. But God says, when you eat black man, when you eat Hispanic man, you're only supposed to consume the things that have skin, uh, that fins and scales. So what doesn't have fins and scales? Well, crab doesn't have fins and scales. Uh, shrimp doesn't have fins and scales. Catfish doesn't have fins and scales. Lobster doesn't have fins and scales. So God says, guess what? Those things in the seafood or in the sea, the ocean, the rivers, you eat it without fins and scales, you are unclean. God says you need to stop that if you love him. Because a lot of times we say we love God, but when it comes to his word, we won't do anything that it says. So the question is, do I really love the Most High God? The answer is no. Read. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers of all that move in the waters and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. God says that is an abomination unto the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans when you put the unclean foods into your mouth. Now the question is, how does God feel about abominations? Let's get that in Sirach, I believe it's 1315. The book of Sirach, chapter 15 and verse 13. The Lord hateth all abominations. The Lord hateth all abominations. So when he says that it is an abomination, guess what? When you eat abominable things, you heard the saying, you are what you eat. When you eat abominable things, you become abominable. And then when we eat unclean foods and become unclean, does God really love us? Let's see what the Bible says. And they that fear God, read it again. The Lord abominations. It says the Lord hates abominations. So he doesn't love the uh, sinner and hate the sin. He hates both. God says that he does what? The Lord hateth all abominations. All abominations. So put in unclean foods like the shrimp, the crab, the lobster, the pork. When he puts that in, when we put that into our body, guess what? God hates all abomination. You understand? This is the dietary law that God gave to the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And if you know a so-called black, Hispanic, let them know the message of God. God says that pork, shrimp, crab, lobster is unclean. Keep reading. And they that fear God, when you fear God, when you actually love him and care about his word, read, love it not. They love not the abominations. They hate eating pork. When you love God, they ha you hate eating shrimp, crab, lobster. You won't have it on your taco. You won't have a uh, uh, shrimp and grits. God says, come back to him. Come back to his commandments. Let's get that. Let's get John chapter 14 and verse 15. The Bible says the same thing from the beginning all the way to the end. And that's what a lot of preachers and priests and Catholic, uh, 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 what, what are they, whatever they're called, Vatican's. All of that, they never, the cardinals, they never bring out the true laws of the Most High God. Read. The book of John, chapter 14 and verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. This is Jesus the Christ. Jesu Christo. He says, if you love me, then guess what you would do? You would keep my commandments. You wouldn't put the abominable things into your body. You wouldn't worship this so-called uh, white man, this Caucasian. Jesus Christ is a black man according to the Bible. So when we worship another being, guess what? You worship an idols. All right, my brother. It's an abomination. Keep reading. Read it again. If ye love me, keep my commandments. I know this may be the first time some of y'all are hearing this, and you may be a, a little vexed in your spirit, a little upset. Trust me, when I first heard the truth, I was too. But then I, I compared the Bible to my actual life. What does the Bible say compared to what my pastor said? My pastor was a liar. Right. You understand? Because God's Bible is the truth. That's right. Read it again. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I pray, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Forever. What? 
is a comforter due to us when we listen to his scriptures, when we start to apply the most high God word? Go to verse 26. What happens to the man, to the woman, to the Israelite man and woman, a black Hispanic man and woman when we keep God's commandments? Read. The book of John chapter 14 and verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Once you start keeping the commandments of God, do away with the pork, the shrimp, the crab, the lobster, guess what? He says, you know what? I will make my abode in you and I will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. What is it that we need to remember? Well, we need to remember our nationality. We're not Puerto Rican. God says we're from the tribe of Ephraim. We're not Mexican. God says we're from the tribe of Issachar. We're not black. God says that we're from the tribe of Judah. The same tribe as Christ. God says that the true Jews are the black people on the face of the earth. Those that went into slavery by slave ships. Who were sold in America. Who were sold in Spain. Who were put in the fields in, in uh, uh, Mexico. God says that you are the Israelites. Nobody else. You understand? Let's get some more. Let's get Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will bring all things to your remembrance. What do we need to remember? That we are the Israelites. That's why we speak Spanish. Spanish is not your language. It pertains to Spain. Spanish means pertaining to the Spaniards. Hispanic means property of Spain. You are the Israelites. Read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. God says that you Israelite women, you black Hispanic Native American women, are not to wear that which pertains to a man. When you look at a man, when he gets dressed, what does he put on? He puts on pants. God says that the women of God are princesses and should not be wearing pants. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Just the same way women should not be wearing pants, men should not be putting on skirts and dresses. God says that that is cross-dressing. When a woman puts on what? The yoga pants. When she want to walk out the house looking sexy. You understand? God says, nah, you cross-dressing. Read. For all that do. So he says, for all that cross-dress, when women wear jeans, pants, and all of that all outside, when a man wears dresses, skirts, pretty little earrings hanging down to the navel. God says that what? For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. He says that you are an abomination unto the Lord your God. Again, how does God feel about abominations? Let's go back. Let's go back. My brother, how you doing, my man? I got a quick question. You see yourself right here? You know English. You just said you don't know English in English. You know English. They gonna say you don't know English in English. That was perfect English. Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 15 and verse 13. Hermano, hermano. Hermano. Do you speak? Read. The Lord hateth all abominations. So it says that when we cross dress, when a man puts on things that pertain to the woman, or when a woman puts on things that pertain to the man, he says that he hates that. He hates when we're in that state. Because we're doing something that he told us not to do. When you when your children do things that you tell them not to do, what do you do? You punish them. That's why we keep getting shot down in the streets. It's not just black people who get shot down in the streets. It's Hispanics that get shot down in the street all day. They throw us in prison. We can't even drive without being afraid that they're going to pull us over. Why? Because God is punishing us as a people for not keeping his commandments. Let's get that. Isaiah chapter 4. 42 and verse 22. You ever ask yourself, black man, Hispanic man, why does the prison houses, why are they filled with people like us? Why is it that in every state, every country, you, the majority of the people in prison is the blacks and Hispanics? You ever wondered that? Look what God says. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42 and verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Look at your heritage. Look at your history. You used to run the whole earth, but 
God says that you are a people that have been robbed. You've been robbed of your culture. You've been robbed of your land. You've been robbed of your language, your dress, your music. He says the Israelites are a people that have been robbed and spoiled. How do we become spoiled? Now we have to rely on the other nations for food, for clothing, for water. Everything that's supposed to be free, we, we go to them just to get it. Now we rely on them every day. We got to pay water for our bills now. You understand? When water is free, read. They are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. God says that our people are, are snared in holes. Is that what it says? Snared in holes? Read it again. They are all snared in holes. That means trapped in holes. You ever heard the old term, throw them in a hole? Throw them in a hole. Solitary confinement. When we was in the slave fields, they put us in the, in the, back, in the back house somewhere, in a hole. Slavery. That's still where we are today. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.